This is the box brownie camera produced by Kodak from the early 1900s till the 30s, this one in particular being the box brownie number two. It was released around 1930 making it nearly 100 years old. I love it for no good reason. Technically, it is a shit camera. It only has two shutter speeds, 1 50th and bulb, and two apertures, f11 and f8. But it also has a tripod socket, so I guess that kind of makes up for it. Nothing about this camera exactly screams good, but I just love shooting with it. The camera itself is so rich in history and definitely deserves its own video, but today I'm gonna to be taking some self-portraits on it. As I mentioned before, the history of this camera is amazing. It was pretty much the first kind of commercial point and shoot camera sold at mass. They were advertised as you pressed burn and we did a rest, really booming commercial photography for everyday people. As I mentioned before, I have got a whole video planned just around this camera and its connection to the Titanic sinking, weirdly enough. But that's in the future, so definitely stick around if you do want to see that. But for now, let's get into loading the camera. This camera takes 120 film, so I'd be shooting HP5, and the negatives it produces are 6x9, which is conventionally larger than most other cameras. Here's it compared to 6x6 and 6x7, which is what I more regularly shoot. As we are shooting with a larger negative, that does mean we only get eight photos per shoot, which is crazy. How much even is a HP5 at the moment? Jesus Christ. On Analog Wonderland, HP5 120 is currently seven pound a roll, making it just under one pound an image. So you can kind of see how expensive it gets if you start shooting portrait in this thing. For these self-portraits, I set up this funky mirror we have in the corner of our living room. I did have to give it a massive clean though first. Next up was lighting using this video light I have. Turning on it emitted the same power of the fucking sun in our living room. Thankfully the box brownie does have a tripod socket as I mentioned before. This is going to be incredibly useful because most of these exposures were going to be around 4 seconds long because I was shooting indoors. Okay. Okay that's kind of good. I kind of cooked a little bit. I'm really vibing with the lo-fi aesthetics this camera is giving off. As I mentioned before the camera is shit so the lens quality is going to be awful. But magnifying that onto a 6x9 negative is kind of fucking cool. There's a really good grainy moody feeling to some of these. I didn't really vibe with the jumper I was wearing so I took it off and took my next image. And you know, it came out great again. The green is really punctual and also the soft focus of me just being kind of shallowy out of focus. I, it's nice, I kind, of, I kind of vibe with it. If I did have to change anything, I'd probably consider what was in the background of what I was shooting. Uh, as you can see, my water bowl was just sitting there. Kind of looks weird. For the next frame, I went for a bit of a different pose this time, kind of crouching instead, and this is the first certified match tube flop of the video. It is completely overexposed, mainly because it's kind of hard to time how long you're doing an exposure when you're just counting in your head. In all, in all honesty though, I kind of fuck with it, it's kind of giving the illuminated man kind of feeling. I, I do kind of like it. One could say a happy accident, just like me. I decided to change location of where I was shooting and also sharp. I really just wasn't fucking with the outfits I was wearing today. For this one, I'd be standing and looking into the mirror and I'm just gonna cut to the bullshit now. None of these images came out. That was three images wasted down the gutter. Well, a shame. <sighs> so with almost half the roll wasted, I really had to make the last few count. I went back to the original pose from the start of the video and I took this. The exposure, especially on my shot, isn't really perfect, but I do like how it's kind of came out. Again, another very moody, punctual vibe to it. The green is quite pronounced. Um, chef's kiss, I just love it. The last frame I thought I'd actually finally utilise the fact that I'm doing four second exposures and uh, move while shooting. For it, I kind of just tilted my head as I was shooting and I created this. Oh my god, did I cook. Not only is the green soft focus and perfect exposure pulling through, but I've got three faces. I didn't even notice this at the time when I was shooting, but in the edge of the mirror you can see my face for a third time. I just really think it makes the image. So much about it is moody and grungy, even with the negative space reflected in the mirror being a window. I love it. Honestly, shooting with this box camera has been really fun. The limitations I come with such like a basic, boring camera really just helps you breed creativity. The only downside I could probably say to this camera is the viewfinders. They are crusty and dirty, and even if they were clean, they'd probably be shit anyway. This camera is definitely a must-have for anyone's collection and can be probably found in 90% of antique stores. As always, thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more of my work, you can check out my Instagram and the link in the description below. I've also recently launched a blog on alternate process photography if you want to go give that a read. Thank you for watching and Matt out.